So this video is for integrated two. This is for the chapter four MA. Practice test part two for section 41244. So when we're entering these into our calculator, you have to pay attention to the angle that they give it to you. So the two I just highlighted in orange, those are both given in radians. The angles are in radians, so I need my calculator in radians. This one here is in degree minute seconds. I need my calculator in degrees. So for the first one, I am going to be um, doing the reciprocal of cosine of, of secant, which is cosine. So I'm going to do cosine of 2.8 pi. Again, making sure my calculator is in radians. So let me just put that in my calculator. And I end up with a negative 1.24 as my answer. For the next one, um, this one is going to be a sine. So I'm going to go one over sine of five over three pi. Now, when I'm doing this, if I'm not putting it in as a fraction, I want to make sure that I go Five divided by parentheses three pi. The three pi needs to be grouped in the denominator. So if I'm doing it in, in using the fraction mode, and I'm talking about it more when I'm entering in the five pi, five thirds, five over three pi. I apologize. So if I do five over three pi. In that case, I do not need parentheses around the three pi. And you see, I get a 1.98. But if I'm doing it like this, where I'm going one divided by sine five of, and I need three pi in parentheses, otherwise it's gonna take the five divided by three and then times it by pi. So you see, I get the same answer here. But if I take that same problem and I just went five divided by three pi and I didn't group the three pi together, you see, I don't get this, the same answer, okay? So I should be getting a 1.98 in both cases. Okay, on C, now this one is going to be um, in degrees. And either I can use the button where I've got 113 degrees, 54 minutes, 12 seconds, or I can go one divided by tangent of 113 plus 54 out of 60, that's going to change my uh, minutes into what part of a degree. And 12 out of 3,600 is going to do the same, but change my, my seconds into part of a degree. Now this, my calculator needs to be in degrees. Okay. So I'm going to do one over tangent of 113. And then on, I'm going to use the second button with the apps button for the word angle. So second apps. And it's going to be number one is my degree. And then I'm going to be doing 54. Um, minutes. And then for my 12 seconds, I'm going to hit the green alpha button and the plus sign. Okay, so there's my seconds. And I end up with a negative 0.44. Now, if I do it the other way, um, let's just say I just, I don't even do any fractions. So one divided by tangent, okay. 113 plus 
54 out of 60 plus 12 out of 3,600. And you see, I get that same negative 0.44. Now on number um, eight, um, I am going to be drawing a picture here, okay? And I have a circle. Um, now when I'm doing this, if I'm thinking about five pi fours, just as a visual, five pi fours would be here in quadrant three and my radius is six. So when they want me to find uh, the arc length, I want to find all the way to here. Now I know circumference is two pi r, and so my circumference, because my radius is six, is going to be 12 pi. Now I can do this. I can take five pi force, which is what part of the circle I have, out of a whole circle, which is two pi, and times it by 12 pi. Now what's going to happen here? is my pi and pi cancel out. And actually the two goes into this six times and you see that really I'm taking the radian angle and timesing it by the radius and I get 30 pi force. Now, if I do this in my calculator, whoops. So um, 30 pi force, you see I end up getting um, 23 point, and they want to the nearest tenth, six inches for my answer. Now on um, the next one, when I'm doing the area, my area is gonna be pi r squared. So my area is 36 pi. So again, I can take five pi force out of two pi and times it by the area, which is 36 pi. Now what ends up happening is I end up with five pi force. And here, basically I end up with my pi's canceling and I end up with half of my radius squared. Okay, so half of my radius squared is 18. And so if I'm doing this and I get five pi force times 18, I end up with 70.69 inches squared. On number nine, um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So really, I want to see where where my angle needs to be for my cosine to be one over two point three four five six. Now I'm going to do cosine inverse of one over two point three four five six. I'm going to put that in my calculator. That's going to give me it in quadrant one in terms of radians. Now, just a quick note. Um, my cosine is positive in quadrants one and four. So this is where I'm going to be. Now, usually I try to find my um, reference angle. In this case, my reference angle is going to be one of my answers. So I want my calculator in radians because they asked me for me to have it um, between zero and two pi. So then I'm gonna do cosine inverse of one divided by 2.3456. And I get a 1.13. Um, so let's say that's about here. So I get a 1.13 radians. Well, I'm also going to have that same thing here. Now to find this, I'm going to take 2 pi minus 1.13. And so when I take 2 pi minus 1.13, I end up with 
5.15. On letter B, this time I want it in degrees. So um, my cosine is going to be negative in quadrants three and four. And then in this case, I am going to definitely use the reference angle. So I'm going to go sine inverse. And again, I'm going to do it as the positive 0.1854. It's not going to be my answer. It's going to give it to me in quadrant one. I'm going to use that as a reference. Um, again, they want this in degrees, so I want to change my mode to degrees. So sine inverse of 0.1854, I end up with 10.68. So 10.68 degrees. Now that's not my answer. That is going to be where it would be in quadrant one. So here in quadrant three, I'm going to go 180 plus 10.68. So 180 plus 10.68 gives me 190.68 degrees. Then I'm going to have the same thing here. That's going to be two, not two pi, sorry. 360 degrees minus 10.68. So 360 minus 10.68. I end up with 349.32 degrees. Okay, on 10. So for this, I know my secant is negative where my cosine is negative. And my cosine is negative in quadrants two and three. And then I'm trying to see where my cotangent is negative. Now my cotangent is negative in quadrant two and quadrant four. So I'm going to be in quadrant two. So let me draw a triangle in quadrant two. Now, um, let me just rewrite this. A negative 2.5 is a negative five halves. So when I'm doing this, if my angle is here, Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. And then by Pythagorean theorem, two square plus negative five square equals 29. So this is going to be the square root of 29. So the cosecant um, of that angle is going to be. The reciprocal of sine. So let me first find my sine. Sine is going to be 2 over root 29, okay, which I would rationalize, but in this case, I didn't want that. I wanted my cosecant. And that's going to be root 29 over 2. And that is my answer. On number 11. Um, so I want my sine negative, but we're talking about it in quadrant three. It's also negative in quadrant four. And let me just draw a triangle in. And for this triangle, my sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to have a negative 2 squared plus x squared equals 7 squared. So basically 49 minus 4 is a 45. So I'm going to have the square root of 45, and I can clean that up. That is a 9 times 5, so that's going to be a 3 root 5. So this is going to be a 3 root 5, negative 3 root 5, because the direction I'm in. And they want secant. Well, secant is the reciprocal of 
cosine. So let me just find cosine temporarily. So cosine is going to be negative root three over five over seven. So this is gonna be a negative seven over three root five. I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom by root five to rationalize. And I get a negative seven times root five over three times five or 15. Now for my tangent, tangent is going to be y over x or opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to have a negative 2 over a negative 3 root 5. So that's going to be a positive 2 over 3 root 5. I'm going to rationalize times the top by root 5 times the bottom by root 5, and I get a 15. So 2 root 5 over 15. On uh, number 12, I want to find the reference angle. So what I want to understand just in terms of um, where elevenths are here, if this is pi, I can think of this as 11 pi elevenths. Now, half of 11 would have been 5.5, so this would have been 5.5 pi over 11, which means this, if I add 5.5 onto 11, I'm gonna get 16.5 pi over 11. So I'm gonna be in quadrant three. So let's say I am here and going all the way to here is a 15 pi 11. I want this piece right here. And that piece right there is going to be basically 15 pi 15 minus um, 15, sorry, not 15 pi 15, so I'm, I'm dealing with 11s, I apologize. That is going to be um, 11, pi elevenths, and I'm going to be subtracting 15 pi elevenths, that off of 15 pi elevenths, and I'm going to end up getting 4 pi elevenths, and that's going to be my reference angle. On B, 354 degrees, that's going to be in this quadrant. Okay, so I'm going all the way around here, and this is 354 degrees, and I want this angle. So that angle is going to be 360 minus 354, which is going to be 6 degrees. Find the equation of a line whose angle of inclination with the x-axis is 30 degrees. So basically, I know that my slope is going to be tangent of 30 degrees. And then I'm going to go x minus 3 plus 4. That's my answer. Now, tangent of 30, 30 degrees is as a point root 3 halves comma 1 half on the unit circle. So I basically have one half times the reciprocal if I'm going to be dividing it. So I end up with one over root three, and then I rationalize and I get root three over three. So a second equation, you can give me y equals root three over three times x minus three plus four. On 14. So in this situation, um, we have a couple of triangles going on here. So um, this is problem 14, it got cut off from the video. So in this picture, you have your 43 degrees, which is angle, let me find my mouse here, sorry. You have your 43 degrees, which is angle A. You have your 50.5 degrees, which is angle B. We know that this length here, D, is 7. 
what we want to find is this length right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this y. And I'm going to call this x. So I'm going to write two um, situations. One situation, I am going to be looking at this triangle here. Okay. And for that triangle, I'm, I'm going to be dealing with tangent. So I'm going to take tangent of 50.5 degrees equals y over x. And if I rewrite that, x times tangent of 50.5 degrees is equal to y, okay? I'm gonna just move this a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to do one for the other triangle. This triangle is gonna be this one here this big triangle. And so I'm going to set up similar for that. So for this one, I'm going to go um, tangent of 43 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is going to be x plus 7. It's that whole length, x plus 7. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to have x plus 7 times tangent of 43 degrees is equal to y. Now, both of these are equal to y, so I can set them equal to each other, okay? So I am going to end up with x tangent of 50.5 degrees plus, um, and for the other one, let me just distribute this. This is going to be um, x tangent of 43 degrees plus seven times tangent of 43 degrees is equal to y. Uh, not equal to y, sorry, they're equal to each other. I apologize, these are equal to each other, okay? Because both of them are equal to y. So I'm setting this equal to this. And I just distributed the tangent of 43 to the, to the teal one. Okay, so now um, what I want to do is I want to get my x's on the same side. So I'm going to have x tangent of 50.5 degrees minus x tangent of 43 degrees is equal to 7 tangent of 43 degrees. Um, I'm going to factor an x out of this and I'm going to get tangent of 50.5 degrees minus tangent of 43 degrees uh, left over. Okay, those are just numbers. I'm gonna put it all in my calculator at the end. Equals seven tangent of 43 degrees. Then I wanna get my X by itself. So I'm gonna go seven tangent of 43 degrees. And I'm gonna divide it by that quantity tangent of 50.5 degrees minus tangent of 43 degrees. I'm going to put that into my calculator. And again, my calculator needs to be in degrees. So I'm going to do um, 7 tangent of 43 over tangent of 50.5 minus tangent of 43. Oops, and when I'm doing this, I need to be careful. Um, I forgot, calculator puts in parentheses, so I need to close that parentheses. Let me start again. Okay, so seven tangent of 43 over tangent of 50, Point five, close that parenthesis, minus tangent of 43. And I'm going to get that this is equal to 23 point, let's say 26. So this right here is 23.26. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that x and I can put it into either equation. I'm thinking that the one that would be the easiest one 
is going to be this one right here. So to find my Y, which is what I want, I'm going to take my 23.26. I'm actually going to keep it in my calculator and times it by tangent of 50.5 degrees. So I'm going to take this and times it with tangent of 50.5 degrees. And I end up with 28.22. So my Y is going to be 28.22.